Hi guys, in today's video, we are going to create a video chat application in less than 15 minutes. And yes, if we are going to create it entirely within the first 15 minutes of this video. And we are going to use the SDK called Ego Cloud. It provides the real-time calling services like video call and audio call uh, with a lot of great options which we will explore later on. So you can see a demo of the application running on my screen. I have an emulator and a real device both connected to my screen and both are running this application on them and as you can see it is working great right one is the emulator input and one is the real input from the device all the features the toggle buttons the camera buttons or everything is included in the sdk package itself so we only need to import it and use it for our own use so without further ado let's get started with this video Let's start with going to the Zigo Cloud's website. You can simply search Zigo Cloud on Google and it will come up with the first result. Then on this web page, uh, you need to go to Start Building. After Start Building, you need to create your account first. So please enter your details over here. Since I have already entered these and created my account, I will not be creating it again. And it will give you a free trial of 10,000 minutes. That should be plenty to like create your projects and experiment our stuff, right? So once you have your account created with this uh, Zigo Cloud, you need to go to your dashboard. So if you open the Zigo Cloud again, you will be created with a dashboard like this. Here you can see all your projects are listed and all the minutes that you have utilized and how much are they costing you, etc. All the details are there, right? So let's create a new project. You can see there are lots of options with the project templates like the video on video, video conference, live streaming and so much more options like you can go and explore all of them at your own pace but for this video I am going to be selecting the first option that is a one on one video call application. Hitting next I need to enter the project name let's call it flutter underscore vc flutter video call and here you can see you have two options to move forward from here either you can use the ui kit that these guys are providing or you can use the sdk to create your own ui so i am going to choose the ui kit option since it is pretty decent and gets your job done in less than 10 minutes so i am going to copy this code which is given with this if you want you can take the sdk option as well so i'll start building with the ui kit So after the project is created, you will be greeted with a few options like for web, for iOS, for Android. For web, if you are creating the application with React or Vue.js, you can choose the web option or iOS or Android similarly. For today's video, we are concerned with Flutter, so I am selecting Flutter. And here I need to select a few options like one-on-one -on -one video call and group call. So I will be choosing one-on-one -on -one video call for now. And there are a few more options given below which you can toggle if you want. I leave them at default and go ahead with the next button. So after your project has been created, you will be able to see an app ID and an app signature. And if you click on quick start, you will be redirected to this page, which is the actual code that we are going to follow along in this tutorial. So I'll also share this link in the description link of this article. But for the meantime, I'm just opening it in a split tab in my computer. I have VS code window opened up here. You can follow this along with Android Studio as well. So I'll quickly create a new Flutter project. Choose a holder and some Flutter project name. I'll also share my GitHub repository for this project if you want to check your code or something in the video's description. Now you can see our Flutter project has been created. I'll open it in the right with the documentation as well. Now let's follow, follow along the instructions given the docs. So firstly, we'll add the Zigo Cloud package to our Flutter application. So simply I'll open the terminal and paste this command flutter pub add. It will automatically add the Zigo, Zigo UI kit in your Flutter application. 
And the next thing I am copying is uh, the import command. I'll paste it in the top. Since we are going to be importing it in this file only. So as you can see, it has been installed. The package is installed. Now I'll copy the code. Copy the widget code for this thing. Now conveniently enough, these guys have provided the code as well to the widget. So we don't need to configure anything else. We can simply like remove all this code and paste our code that we have copied. I'll create another Maya widget in the meantime. Now let's paste it. So you see we have taken the code directly from the Vigo Cloud's documentation. So now it will ask you for the app ID and app signature. But before coming to those things, uh, let's configure the project first. We have some configuration steps as well before we get started. So let's follow them step by step. So the first thing which is given is uh, we need to change the compile SDK version. So I'll open this Android app and then source and then build.gradle. Inside of my build.gradle file, what I'll do is I'll find the compile SDK version and change it to 33 as suggested in the documentation. So simply remove this line and write 33 here. Similarly, we need to find the minimum SDK version as well in the same file and we need to change it to 21 okay now with that thing done uh, we need to also configure our permissions the permissions for our video calling and audio calling features so for that we need to open android manifest.xml in the main folder open this and copy the permissions now after copying these permissions, you need to carefully place them between the manifest and the application tags. As you can see it in my code, I have carefully placed them between the manifest and the application tag here. Now after this, we also need to create a new file. So let's do that. Let's follow the instructions. So inside the Android, app inside the app folder itself we need to create a new file that, that will be called proguard rules.3 proguard rules.3 simply copy paste the uh, code given to us now we need to add uh, some more configuration in the build.gradle file which is located in your Android app build.gradle. So I'll copy this code and get into the file. Now inside of this file, I need to add this in the release build type. So I've added it here. Now if you are following it along with iOS as well, you can follow these instructions since I am doing it from the Android only, I uh, will be skipping these things. But if we go down and see, uh, these are all the configuration steps that we needed to do for the project. So if you can figure out how to call the UI on your own, this much was the video you can uh, enjoy the rest of the day. right? But if you want to learn how to like connect the UI as well, I will be creating the UI for this as well in the next 10 minutes. So let's begin with the UI. So you can easily bring the app ID and app signature from the dashboard uh, which I have shown earlier. I have simply created some constants like app ID and app signature and then uh, and replace them with that. So moving on with this, uh, firstly you need to uh, write some parameter to this uh, arrow function. So I, I have given it underscore because I am not going to be using it. Otherwise it was giving me some errors. 
So make sure you put an underscore or some parameter here. After that, we are ready to start with our project work. So this user ID and username, we need to take it from the user actually. So I am I'm creating two variables here called as uh, call ID and uh, uname. And user ID, I am planning on generating it uh, each time. So I am adding it to the constructor. Since I have not taken the user ID, what I will try to do is like generate it here itself. So I will replace the U name first. And then for the user ID, what I will do, uh, since this is a testing application only, I can write U name plus some random string, right? So plus one, two, three. But in real applications, you might want to use a, a real uh, randomly generated user ID for avoiding conflicts, right? For our application, we are using it like this. And with that, our call uh, call screen is ready. This much part is ready. And let's uh, create a form in from which we can take the user input. If you don't want to create a form and all, like you can simply do navigator.push the call page and your call will start automatically, right? So for you, the video is also done now. But if you want to create the form, uh, like create, give the user the option to enter their names and the call ID, uh, just follow up. So I'll create a standard Flutter application, like I'll create a material app. I'll, uh, I'll also create a home screen. I've created a home screen with stateful widget because I'm going to use the form here in the text editing controllers here. Now let me try to run my application. I have connected my real device onto my computer screen, as you can see here. So the application has started. It displays nothing because we have nothing on the screen. So let me give that give the app bar and give it some title. Like we see our app bar here. After that, let me create a floating action button, which will act as our call button. And I'll write call as its text. Okay, so there is our floating action button. Now, as I told you earlier, if you want to uh, simply like navigate to the call page what you can do uh, you can simply navigate it to the next page right you can simply write navigator dot of context dot push so let me write it down as well i'll write navigator dot of context dot push and i need to push a material route now with that material page route takes a builder and inside of that builder I'll write call page with my call ID and username so we don't have these values yet you can hard code them if you want to just test it out but I'm going to build a form from which we will take these values from the user so I'm leaving them alone for now and working on the body I'll create a column wrap it inside a form so I'll create a key for this so now I'm quickly creating two form fields with their separate controllers first is the name controller and second is the ID controller 
now i'm adding some padding to it and let's try to run this and it works great with right? this put in place let's go ahead and uh, uncomment our navigator from navigator code and let's replace this you name and call id with the real values uh, name controller dot text dot to string and similarly for the call id Now if you enter the name and ID, you should be able to open the application. So it will ask for some permissions. And you see uh, my camera has been low turned on and all the features are working great. So guys, this was how to create a video chat application in less than 15 minutes. And we have done it live on the screen with the UI part as well. Now we can explore a lot of options which the Sego Cloud SDK offers in the upcoming videos. Till then, stay tuned and goodbye.